Good evening. Thank you so much for today for being with us, um, you guys out in the audience and you out there in the Facebook, the Facebook um, media. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you on behalf of uh, the team that you know, it's just to have you guys here every Wednesday just to support us on. It, it's very, very encouraging. I know your heart is with us and that speaks volumes. Um, and one more thing before we start, uh, this Sunday is daylight savings time, so if you still operate on the analog clocks, please turn your clock back an hour, but if you have the iPhones or, or, or the smartphones, they auto um, correct itself, but uh, yeah, so without further ado, please um, let's give it up to our band, uh, they've been practicing and they have some songs that they want to share and praise our Lord together. So without further ado, give it to Destiny. <laughs> Everyone, please stand for, and stand for praise and worship. Peace, bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break At your name still, call the sea to still The rage in me to still, every wave At your name, Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus Silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Breathe and call these bones to live, call these lungs to sing once again. I will praise Jesus, Jesus. The darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. It's a lie that the shadows can't deny your name. Cannot be overcome. Your name is alive, forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, the silence fades. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Sorrow and dead in my sin, lost without hope with no place to begin. Love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Flesh was redeemed, only beauty remains But my orphan heart was given a name Morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance When death was arrested and my life began Your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new, now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new, now life begins with you. 
with you Peace from my chains, I'm no prisoner no more My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore Left in the earth and it called me his friend When death was arrested and my life began Savior displayed on a criminal's cross Darkness rejoiced us, though heaven had lost Jesus arose with our freedom in hand That death was arrested and my life began Oh, your grace so free washes over It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new, now life begins with you. Oh, we're free, free, forever we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free. And my life began when death was arrested, and my life began. Everyone, please close your eyes and bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank that we're here today. I brought my here, made it here safely. I want to um, praise, um, I put some prayer requests for um, that anyone's going through anything, that you be there with them, and that for the kids, for school, that you people in um, college and people that work, that you be with them. And also for the weather change, that anyone that's sick, that you are able to heed them. And also for um, the sermon from Brother Lennon, that we're able to um, soak in the message and that we're able to use it for our daily lives. In your name, Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, girls. Awesome job, as always. Thank you. Okay, so before we get into the word, I would like to extend my condolences because this past Saturday um, in Des Moines, Iowa, um, there's a community that I keep in touch with. There's, there's a tie down community out there. Whenever I go there, I always have a place to stay, and there's a church that I always visit as well. They have a their, um, the name of the church is a Life Song Open Bible Church. Recently on Saturday, their their pastor had passed and gone to be with the Lord as she uh, was battling cervical cancer for the past five years. But before that, my friend who I stay with, he is the associate pastor of that church. So knowing that we know her name is Pastor Kong. Dealing with that cancer that she's dealt with for five years. I visited the Moy about a month ago with a friend. And shortly after that, Pastor Kong had announced that she stopped all treatment for her cervical cancer because there was nothing else that they could do. No other options. It was just the cancer had already spread to her body and she was at peace with the decision and was ready to be with the Lord. With that being said, they officially transferred power from Pastor Kong to my friend, who's now Pastor Chris Kavan, who is now the head um, pastor of that church, and he will lead the charge for that community. So we want to lift him up for <clears throat> the recent loss, but also moving forward with their new pastor and new leadership in tech. In tech. So um, I only want to mention this because though there's a lot of loss in that, there's so much to be thankful for and a lot of gratitude. Gratitude for Pastor Kong in her state of dealing with cervical cancer. She still took on the position of being the head pastor of that, 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 that church over there. 
for the five years she served with them, she really affected change and was really a strong leader for them. Gratitude, meaning that the action of being thankful and put forth the effort of being thankful. This month is November. Usually that represents what holiday, kiddos? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So in our lives, there could be a lot to be thankful for, but we don't need a holiday to celebrate Thanksgiving or to be in the mindset to give thanks. This is something that should happen for us on a daily basis. This is something we should have all year long. And I hope that with this message that the Lord has given, uh, put in my heart, that we can understand that. So, all right, so I'm going to say a word of prayer, and we'll go ahead and get into the message. All right, so let's bow our heads. Gracious Father, as I mentioned, um, we want to, first off, we want to thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the life that you breathe through us. Lord, you give, you take away. It's just who you are because you know what's best. You know what um, you know what it means to remind us of how precious life is and how short life can be. But you are here to remind us as well that at the end of at the end of things, at the end of our short temporary life here, that there's always a goal to be with you. And that we want to live the, with that being said, Pastor Kong is, we know that Pastor Kong is full, it's in a new body, she's a new person, and she's with you. We also want to lift up those that she left behind, her husband, family members. We want to keep them in, in mind as well in this time of grieving. Not only them, but the church up there at, in Des Moines, we want to lift them up as well. This moment of grieving in the morning will pass, but at the same time, they know that they have the right, right pieces uh, in place to move forward. Father, as I uh, do my best to convey your message, I, I pray that when we talk about Thanksgiving, we, we, we realize it's a two-syllable word, given it's thanks and it's giving. And for us, I pray that we have the mindset just from moving forward just to give thanks. We don't need to be reminded of a holiday to to know that it is that season. We, just, we need to believe that there isn't just one season for, for Thanksgiving or the mindset of it. Father, I just pray that with every heart and every head that's bowed, that we receive your message tonight. And again, I just pray that you speak to me as I do my best to convey your message. For those who are watching through online, through through social media, through Facebook, or whatnot, I just pray that they able to receive the, um, the same grace that you've given us the, and, and the full extension of, of who you are as well. And that being said, we just want to lift this, lift this up in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Okay, so um, today's message is about gratitude for Christians. Like I said, gratitude is the the mindset of being thankful. It's, it's just another word for being thankful, for saying thanks or being thankful. And with COVID-19 continuing to limit our gatherings, and so Thanksgiving may look a little different this year, or it may look the same as last year. Who knows? Or for a lot of us, Thanksgiving is going to look entirely different this year because it may be considered normal now that we're allowing people to gather now. But during the time of COVID, protecting family members with health concerns took priority over booking flights, hosting big dinners, exceptions for a day, typically celebrated the more the merrier fashion will have to be reconciled with the, gu the guidelines for social distancing and slowly sp the spread, slowing the spread. Celebrations are possible, but they require an extra layer of creativity and care. So because of the pand pandemic, some of us may have lost a dream, a job, or a loved one. Others seem to have lost their patience. 
no, no matter how the event of the years, events of the year have affected us, Thanksgiving presents an opportunity to choose a lifestyle and a mindset of gratitude, to reflect on God's goodness and to deepen our relationship, and to de demonstrate appreciation to the Almighty God for his blessing, both present, both past and present. Okay, so we go to the next slide where, again, we talk about gratitude. There, there's four ways that we as Christians can embrace thankfulness under any circumstances. That's listed here. We're going to kind of go in order and break each one down and how it applies to us biblically. So the first one is cultivate a sense of reflection. Second is cultivate relationships. Third is cultivate remembrance. And last is cultivate a, ha a habit of responsiveness. So the first point, cultivating reflection. So you don't know what the word cultivate means. It just means that uh, it's just presenting a way of doing things. Uh, uh, you know, creating a mindset for it, creating a platform for it. And so just be of mind of what's to take place. So creating reflection. So let's start with the past. I mentioned that Thanksgiving is on the way. Uh, here's a question to us. When was the first Thanksgiving? So, anybody have the, any, those who went to school, does anybody have a year in mind of when the first Thanksgiving, first Thanksgiving was? So, okay, well, I'll just go ahead and say it. Americans might answer the year 1621, and that's partially correct. This was the year of the Pilgrim's first celebration. But the concept of giving thanks is much older. God's people expressed thanks, or they expressed their gratitude um, ever since the, the event called the Feast of the Tabernacles, which was established in the day of Moses. So what is the Feast of the Tabernacles? The Feast of the Tabernacles is also called the Feast because the Israelites were, were to live in booths for seven days. There's a story, well, um, I won't go into this, but if you want to write this down to kind of give you the, the whole overview of the Feast of Tabernacles, um, in the book of Numbers, uh, chapter 29, verses 12 to 40, uh, that's where it kind of details uh, the that event. But the the verse we're going to focus on is out of Deuteronomy, if you could turn to that. Deuteronomy chapter 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 13 to 17. Okay, verse 13, it says, You are to celebrate the festival of shelters. That's also the other word for festival of, of tabernacles. Uh, festival of shelters for seven days. When you have gathered in everything from your fest, from your threshing floor and wind press, wine press, I mean, rejoicing during your festival, you, your son, your daughter, your male and female slave, as well as the Leviite, the legal, the resident alien, the fatherless, and the widow within your city gates, you are to hold a seven-day festival for your Lord, your God, in the place he chooses. Because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and all the work of your hands, you will have abundant joy. Let's see, lost my, oh, uh, verse 16. All of your males are to appear three times a year before the Lord your God in the place he chooses, the festival of the unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, and the festival of shelters. No one is to appear before the Lord empty-handed. Everyone must appear with a gift suited to his, to his means, according to the blessing the Lord your God has given you. Okay. So as mentioned, this is, again, just, we talk about giving thanks. And, of course, in the day of Moses, this, uh, sometimes 
you have to come to a place where the Lord had ordained for you to be summoned at. You have to come. You can't come empty handed. And so so God ordained this long week long or observance while the Israelites traveled through the desert desert on their way to the promised land. It was one of the many rituals he designed to draw his people closer to him and to teach him about the implications of living in the presence of his holiness. This is still a valuable discipline for believers today. We need to ponder the Lord's nearness and cultivate a sense of his presence. It's a habit of mind we ought to nurture every day of the year, but the days leading up to Thanksgiving can are especially an opportune time. And so it's just, I, I, I would take, I'm reminded of what, um, um, who I consider a big sister uh, in Christ usually says when she feels like she's overwhelmed with life and needs to slow down. So she always has a saying that I need to slow down so that my soul can catch up. In other words, if we fear off to where we fear, if we veer off to where we feel like the Lord's not near us, we have to sometimes just catch up and slow down overall. For a lot of us who are in this, who live in the United States, we're, we're in this work, work culture that, that uh, puts you in 40 to 60 hour weeks of work, and sometimes you don't have enough time for your family or enough time for your studies if you're doing both, both work and school. And that could be overwhelming. Mentally, it could break you down. But you have to ask yourself, where is God in that as well? Are we veering too much away from God to where we can't allow ourselves to catch up with him? And so, um, and as mentioned in the, in the scriptures, there were three different festivals um, mentioned here. We will touch upon those as well. And so, uh, But in the next point, we talk about cultiv cultivating relationships. Uh, this is something we have to do as far as expressing gratitude in everyday life. And so we, first we talk about the reflection, and now we're going to talk about relationships. So one of the many blessings of Thanksgiving is the opportunity to spend time with others. When God ordained the, the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of Tabernacles, he intended them to be, he intended them to be times of togetherness. And so if we turn back uh, to... Back to Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 16, but only for, focusing on verse 14. It says, Rejoice during your festival, you, your son, your daughter, your male and female slaves, as well as the Levites, the resident alien, the fatherless, and the widow within your city gates. So, again, just kind of, we got to, I think that in in small knit communities like ours, we do value a lot of relationships. We, we often are concerned or more curious of how our lives are going. And so, whereas opposed to maybe if you go to maybe a bigger church, people might not be as inclined to be invested in, in people's lives personally. And so, because... Sometimes, because I experience this too, I, I've been to a couple, a couple of super churches, I guess, or mega churches, if you will, to where sometimes you, you get the praise, you get to be with God, you get to be amongst community, but at the same time, the missing element is the personal relationships. It seems like everyone who are a part of that environment, they just want to go on a Sunday, be there at a 10 o'clock, leave at leave at 10.45 or 11, and just go. That doesn't really leave any room for uh, real relationship building and things like that. But for a small community like us, you know, um, we're able to implement that, that type of environment. And so, and this is what it means when it cultivates relationships. Because, you know, from my years of being with the youth, I could probably say, like, mentoring like three to four generations worth of youth, I still, most of them I still have relationships with, you know, and so, and I'm thankful for that. 
um, they allow me to be continue to be a part of their lives some way somehow, you know. So, and we, and on the subject of Thanksgiving, I am one of my favorite things. The one thing I really look forward to is Thanksgiving because we have um, the friends that I grew up with in the church that are my generation. We still keep in touch, and there's a group of us that celebrate uh, uh, Friendsgiving, and so, and I'm really glad to hear that we're able to celebrate it this year since last year we weren't able to. And so, so that's what it means when you talk about cultivating relationships. So just being part of each other's lives, just being, um, you know, just cultivating that relationship. So, okay, so along with that, what is the Feast of Weeks? And so the Feast of Weeks celebrate the harvest. Uh, let's see. There are three examples up there where it talks about the Feast of Weeks. You want to turn with me. The, the verses are up there. So the first verse we're going to look at is out of Exodus. Let's go my place. Exodus chapter 34, verse 22. And so it reads... Observe the festival of weeks with the first fruit of the the wheat harvest and the festival with ingathering at the turn of the agricultural year. And again, I'm just mentioning verses that makes mention of the particular festival itself. And the next verse is out of the book of, of Numbers. Numbers chapters 26, I'm sorry, chapter 28, verses 26 to 31. And it reads, On the day of the first fruits, you are to hold a sacred assembly when you, are pre when you present an offering of new grain to the Lord at your festival of weeks. You are not to do any daily work, present a burnt offering for a pleasing aroma to the Lord, two young bulls, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old, with their grain offering of fine flour mixed with oil, six quarts of each bull, four quarts of, with the ram, and two quarts of each of the seven lambs and one male, one male goat to make atonement for yourself. Offer them with a drink offerings, with their drink offerings in addition to the regular burnt offering and its grain offering. Your animals are to be unblemished. And of course, and see. And also, if we turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verses 9 and 10. Verse 9 says, You are to count seven weeks. Counting the weeks from the time the sickle is first uh, put to the standing grain. You are to celebrate the festival of weeks to the Lord your God with a free will offering that you give in portion, in proportion to how your Lord your God has blessed you. Rejoice before your, your Lord your God in the place where he chooses to have your name dwell. You, your son, daughter, your male and female slave, the Levite within your city gates, as well as the resident alien, the fatherless, and the widow among you. Okay. And so, the Feast of Weeks, it celebrates the harvest. It's celebrating the harvest and is one of, one of three great festivals the Hebrew people later celebrated in Jerusalem. Because it occurred... 50 days from Passover. It was also called the, the Pentecost, meaning 50th. During the Pentecost, though, following the resurrection of Christ, the church was born. And this is out of Acts 2. 
The Bible is the best manual of how to build personal relationships you ever had. Not only were the Israelites instru instructed to celebrate with their families, but they were supposed to invite anyone who was alone. Throughout the Old and New Testament, God places a high value on relationships within family and groups. In the letters of the Apostle Paul, we also find a deep commitment to relationships. As he wrote to several churches, Paul incorporated greetings, introductions, uh, condemnations, or sorry, it's kind of lost. I was trying to read that. And words of warnings to several people. Paul was one of the busiest, most dynamic men on earth, but he made time for people as God instructed. As we prepare for Thanksgiving, let's make time for for people that God has brought into our lives. That's so, over. And so that was just kind of, again, with all being said, just kind of remind us of where we're at as far as how do we embrace thankfulness in any circumstances. First, again, we just develop a sense of reflection. Being able to reflect doesn't always have to uh, cause us to always look back, but it's always good to think back of, uh, of how far we come. Uh, second was to cultivate relationships, as I stated. You know, your your real currency in life is the people you you have, the the the, the relationships you build, and how that can make your life full as well. And so now the third is uh, cultivating uh, remembrance. So as part of the feast of weeks, Moses instructed Israel to remember. Also. That's out of verse. So you don't have to go to this because we kind of gone over this several times. But in the book of De Deuteronomy, uh, chapters 16, verse 12, I'll just read it out loud. It says, Remember that you were slaves in Egypt. Carefully follow these statutes. This is what Moses instructed Israel. He reminded Israel of this, that they were once slaves. So why would he do this? Why would Moses say this? Was Moses asking them to dwell on the oppression of their slavery? No, he wanted them to remember how far God had brought them so they would not neglect to be thankful. And so if you look at this desk right here, this is the scripture still there okay so for any church that you come across to it'll have the same inscription uh correct me if my mom it says do this in remembrance of me and so and so um and it's very upfront when you talk about this altar right here this right here this inscription right here is a reminder uh a reminder to us to to remember our Lord and Savior who has brought us so far in our life. And to not forget that as well, you know. A good constant reminder always puts us in the, can put us in the right mind of state. So, uh, I do want us to, I want us to, I want to mention this as well. So do you think that the word think and thank come from the same root word? Thus, this there is a lesson for us about the nature of thankfulness. When we think about what the Lord has done, we should thank him for all the good things he has provided. So when we reflect, what does it take to reflect? It takes to think. Again, just remind ourselves, it's like, if we think about how far we've come in our lives, we should also thank as well. And so, we want to put that in there. So, and the last point I want to cover as well is cultivating responsiveness. 
So if you recall in the New Testament, in the book of Luke, do you recall the story of the ten leopards? If you would, just turn with me to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. And it says, while, travel, while traveling to Jerusalem, he passed between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered the village, ten men with leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he, he told them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And while, while they were going, they were cleansed. But one of them, seeing that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice gave glory to God. He fell face down at his feet, thanking him, and he was a Samaritan. And then Jesus said, Were not ten cleansed? Were not the ten cleansed? Were there where are the nine? Then didn't any return to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has saved you. So we often focus on the nine men who didn't thank Jesus, but let's, recon let's consider the one that it did. Verses 15 and 16 describes his response. One of them, when he saw he was healed, he returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. This man didn't save face. He enthusiastically expressed his appreciation for the Lord's goodness. On, now, all ten lepers shared the experience of, of physical healing, but only one allowed himself to be transformed by gratitude. The nine decided didn't the, well, the nine didn't decide to be ungrateful. They simply overlooked it in their eagerness to get on, their, get on with their lives. Likewise, we do not intend to be ungrateful when the Lord blesses us. Sometimes we are forgetful. And if we're not careful, we could become one of the nine who did not respond to him. So, again, with all the stories, all the scriptures that we went through, we could see throughout history that people on earth have gone through their own phases of thanksgiving of their own. And so, but in their own way, the, the one common thing is that it was an opportunity to give thanks to God. And so, as I expressed in the beginning, you know, expressing gratitude is something, it's something that should come second nature to us as Christians. You know, Hopefully, if you have the mindset of gratitude, when you get up in each morning, you would thank God. Hopefully, if you somehow uh, make it to work on time, we can thank God. You make it to school on time, we can thank God. You know, give me thanks to God is is uh, doesn't doesn't mean you have to give it, give thanks, acknowledge God a certain amount of ways. It's just the mindset. And, and a healthy habit for us to acknowledge uh, God's presence at all times. So, again, for us, just moving forward, a lot of us experience a lot through this past year, especially during COVID, whether it's losses or, or whatever it may be. We, we also have to find what we're grateful, as well, grateful for as well. And so, so with that being, for, that being said, um, I will I will close this out in prayer and then we'll go from here. So please pray with me. Father, again we just pray or we just come to you. Um just in all of your presence. And at times we can be forgetful that your presence is near us.
or is in within us within within us. I just pray that again, just we don't neglect or forget or off or be in the mindset of that, you know, we take care and it take for granted of what you've given to us. The blessings that you bestowed upon us. I pray that as people, as a church, we can always find things that we could be thankful for. Not to be so focused on things that are negative that may affect our lives in a negative way. Because in the end, we know that you already given us the greatest gift is to be saved. And knowing that there's a there's a place we can look forward to after this life. And Father, as this uh Thanksgiving season rolls, let this be an opportunity for all of us just to have our hearts checked, our mindsets evaluated and to know where we should be. I pray for those who may be struggling right now with their own faith or if they're in a place where they're questioning life. Lord, I just pray that that You speak to them, let them know they're not alone. It's a season to give thanks. I know I, I emphasize that a lot, but there's not enough things that we can give to you. How can we? No matter how much we measure up, no matter how how much things we give is still never enough. But at the same time, I believe you hear us, Lord. You draw near to us, Lord, even though we don't acknowledge you at times. So Father, we just pray that as we move on today, that we can extend that grace that you give to us onto others. And Father, we just pass on that spirit of thankfulness from here on out. I want to lift this up in your son Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you all. Okay.